Thursday, this regular meeting of the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee will come to order on Thursday, August 23rd at 7 p.m. Um, let's see. This meeting is being both audio and video recording. recorded. Is anyone in the audience recording this meeting? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. All those who are able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Hey, thank you. Would the superintendent please take roll? Here. Misty Tomasso? Here. Mr. Farley? Here. Mr. Gazillo? Here. Mr. Hagmeyer will not be here. Mr. Hopper? Here. Mr. Lacatel? Here. Mr. Less? Here. Mr. Peters? He'll be here. Oh, he'll be right back. Sorry. <laughs> declares this um, meeting's agenda to be valid in accordance with open meeting law. And at this time, if there's no objections by the committee, we'd like to move the Wakona building project um, presentation and motion up. We have DRA and Stancia here with us this evening. And also, Mr. Parnas from the Eagle. Um, but before that, are there any responses from the audience before we move into that? Okay, seeing none, we'll, we'll move forward. So did you want to start it or? Carl, do you want to get into it right away? Or? Carl has this down pat, right? Okay. <laughs> Round three. Um, thank you very much for me. Um, Carl, the only thing actually, um, if I just want to preface, um, Mr. Rob said this far more eloquently than, than I could, given that he and Mr. Callahan have spent um, probably the vast majority of their adult lives in this building, Aaron being here since he was um, 14. Um, <laughs> just really the importance of... of <laughs> <laughs> it's quite an amazing perspective Mr. Rob has on this building project, um, combined with Mr. Callahan, who's been here for, for quite a long time. Uh, that really, we just felt so um, involved in every aspect of the decision making, and this really is um, a full recommendation of the, the working group to the full school building committee, and now the full school building committee to you. Um, so I think that's uh, certainly reassuring, knowing that, that those two were so actively involved <coughs> in all of the decisions. Okay. Um, want to share with you tonight is that um, we're at another um, important milestone in the project um, uh, with the, the state um, school building authority, the MSBA, uh, and, and the next submission that we'll be making in early September is called the, uh, they call it the preferred schematic report. We, per we uh, would rather call it the preferred alternative because that's what it means. It, it's a time where we've taken all the multiple of alternatives and, and narrowed it down to the one um, uh, alternative that we'd like to move forward with into schematic design. Um, and so I want to share that with you both in terms of um, uh, what's involved in this mission and obviously the specific uh, design itself. Um, one of the things that, that we've done in, in the last, um, well, actually a couple months is since the, the previous submission, uh, I think the last time I, I met with you all, um, we were submitting the preliminary design program. And that's where we submitted the, the educational plan, the space summary, listing all of the spaces in, in the proposed project, um, and a list of all the alternatives. When we submitted that to the state, we got back comments. Um, some of those comments um, were in regard to the, to the space program, as to how many 
how many um, uh, classrooms, uh, what size, what, uh, what type, um, in, in that regard. They do read these things, they read them fairly carefully, and they, they give us comments, and so we, we responded to them. Thank you. Um, and we responded to them using, th this is their state form. I know you can't read that, but it's just symbolic of the form. It, it has uh, these different categories of core academic spaces, um, special education, art and music, physical education, administrative, and so forth. Um, those are the, the um, green lines there. And what we've done since then is revise this um, um, uh, space program downward um, because we were um, slightly over their guidelines originally in terms of the size of the building and with their um, implication that some of these spaces may be what's called ineligible for reimbursement, meaning the district would have to pay for those spaces 100% and not get reimbursed the way the rest of the project would. We wanted to take a harder look and, and the administration and, and faculty in the working group worked pretty hard at, at scrutinizing the form saying, you know, can we be a little more efficient in, in the layout of some of these spaces? So we did tighten up in a few categories here that added up to a reduction of about 5,000 square feet. So the, the takeaway is that the, the program is, as we're now presenting it is 123,000 square feet. It was originally submitted last time at, oops, I'm sorry, at 128,000 um, square feet. And, and obviously there's a cost implication to that too, and the size of the building uh, is, is somewhat directly proportional to the cost of the building. The, the areas that we reduced though, I think were very um, smart in, in, in looking at preserving the curriculum without reducing the course offerings, the, you know, the strong um, programs that are offered here, but trying to be more efficient primarily through scheduling and, and just um, in, in looking at um, some of these individual spaces. Um, the, the, the most significant ones were in the vocations and technology category where we had previously we, we were um, planning on three tech ed shops and um, in the business category two business um, uh, dedicated uh, spaces and each of those um, in thinking about it and, and, and sharing some past examples of how spaces might be multi-purpose um, we now think we can offer the same curriculum and do it in two tech ed shops and one business classroom that's dedicated to business. The other would be shared with a general classroom. So there'd still be spaces to offer the, the programs, as we said, the preliminary or um, the um, engineering class, the robotics class, the CAD drafting, the video production, entrepreneurship. The entire curriculum as it's offered today could continue to be offered. And, and again, through some scheduling and through sort of sharing of space, we can save in that category that was 2,000 square feet. The, the other um, areas are relatively minor there in, in terms of the academic spaces. The major change there was um, uh, the, the um, greenhouse that was proposed. MSBA says kind of across the board that greenhouses are ineligible for reimbursement even though they're part of the curriculum and even though there's a program here called greenhouse management which we want to continue to offer um, that space um, would have been ineligible so uh, the decision was made um, to take it out of the project make it a freestanding greenhouse that the district could could fund on its own independent of this project probably do it a whole lot cheaper actually than if, if it is attached to the building um, and that was about 350 square feet. So again, not a large um, um, space, but um, one that just helps bring, bring down the um, amount of ineligible square footage. Um, another, the, the chemical storage room, originally in the program, there was an entire room of some 300 square feet. In looking at it, we said we could really contain the amount of chemicals needed here in a chemical um, storage cabinet within a prep room and so we could um, save that square footage too. So these were the kinds of spaces that we were looking at to try to, to um, you know, minimize the, the um, overage. And, and all told, we, we have brought it down from, it, it was originally in the vicinity of 14,000 square feet of ineligible, and now it's 9,000 square feet of ineligible space. And in our experience, this is perfectly normal. Virtually every school we've designed, I think Skanska too, every one of their projects, 
um, invariably the the um, uh, submitted program is a little bit above the the state guidelines and uh, the, the state guidelines are not meant to be like um, prescriptive they're not telling you how to design a school but they're just trying to establish a standard that they can measure all schools by in the Commonwealth so that they have some baseline for when they're you know allocating their funds um, it, it's very similar to the to the way they deal with cost per square foot for construction they pick a very low number that becomes a baseline every project exceeds it um, but it but at least it's a common standard that they can apply throughout the state um, and and this is similar to that so um, so the good news is as I say the, the projects come down a little bit in size which means it's come down a little bit in cost too but without sacrificing the, the educational curriculum so the, the major portion of this submission is about as I said explaining to the MSBA how we went from the, the all the alternatives that we submitted in the preliminary design program and how we get down to a preferred one so as you may recall we started with um, over 13 options uh, um, originally there were 13 a couple variants so um, in, in terms of category in the addition renovation category we had four um, versions of additions and renovations that we first looked at after some preliminary discussion community meetings feedback from groups like yours and the building committee and working group we narrowed it down to these two they're, they're sort of uh, ex different extremes um, where this one number one is saving the entire existing building and adding a small piece uh, of um, uh, new classrooms and science labs uh, across uh, connecting a and b corridor to this option which um, saves only the gym and the auditorium and basically provides all new space for the academic portion of the building there so there's sort of two extremes where this is mostly renovation this is mostly new construction but they still both uh, addition renovation categories after some examination and after some um, evaluation using the criteria that we all shared um, these kind of both fell by the wayside I'll explain a little more um, uh, at the end here in summary but to share with you the new construction options as you remember we, we located six uh, um, locations on the site for potential additions um, as we started developing those there actually turned out to be nine different varieties of buildings or building types that might fit but again after preliminary evaluation we, we narrowed that down to these three locations one two and three um, here that seemed the most feasible um, to look into a little bit more uh, again after feedback uh, and, and community input and so forth we we really uh, we, we added a, a second one on the uh, for number 2A here, so it became 2A.1, which this is an open courtyard, this is a closed courtyard, and, and it seemed that, um, again, the discussion among all involved, that, that the, the 2A option, that that location, uh, location number two on the site, was the, was the preferred option. It, it essentially is kind of where the baseball diamond is and, and a portion of the, of the existing parking lot, um, towards the front of the site um, it, it had the most advantages um, and when we analyzed it this way but because there were um, some variations there we still needed to compare these three versions uh, of, of the building on, on site location number two and, and so you can quickly see them there as I said one is a sort of a open courtyard one is a closed courtyard and this one is, is a little bit of a hybrid um, basically all the components are there and I'll share with you in a moment the floor plans but just to get oriented on the site you know here's here's the main entrance today that orange line is the line of the existing school um, so each of these places the building as I said on the baseball diamond parking lot um, has uh, the majority of the parking in front of the building the rest of the site is used for green space for athletic fields and so forth so they're all basically laid out similarly that's why they're all you know NC 2A and then there's just variations of those that we evaluated and, and where we ended up uh, as you'll see in the end is that the NC 2A.2 is really the preferred option but I, I just want to share with you quickly the the other version so this first one um, looks like that on the site you can see each of them are located away from the existing school so we don't we don't interrupt the flow of the existing building we still maintain the driveway 
to get back to the service area in the kitchen, deliveries, um, access to the playing fields, and, and so forth can continue. And this can be zoned off as the construction zone. Uh, I'll show you the phasing in, in a moment. Um, here's the layout of that building. It, it's, it does very closely follow the education plan where we have these classroom clusters on the academic side of the building, um, on either side of the learning commons or the library, the media center there. Um, on the other half of the building is the gymnasium locker rooms, the auditorium and music rooms. Um, here's the administration. And in the, in the center of the building is the what we refer to now as the student commons. It has the cafeteria, but it is much more than that. And in this option and one of the others, there are two access points. The main entrance here by the administration and a secondary entrance from the parking that's over here. Um, and there is a second floor. Each of these is a two-story option. We really found that two stories not only m meets the education plan well, but it, it also is more compact and works better on the, uh, on the site, is more efficient and so forth. Uh, and so this is that phasing um, uh, strategy that we talked about. So uh, initially, to, because we'd be losing some parking where the building is sited, we, we need to build some new parking first to support the existing school. So we would build um, uh, permanent parking in front of the building as much as can fit there in this phase. And uh, in, in case we're short there, there there's a, um, a contingency to build uh, temporary parking kind of towards the back where there's pavement now by the service area and, and kitchen, but we would extend that as necessary. This probably would be teacher parking and they'd enter in the D corridor here and this probably would be student and visitor parking and administration maybe up front and these people would enter the building the same way you do today. And then this site can be fenced off safely and, and segregated from the ongoing you know, teaching and learning and the building can be built. Once the building is, is built and some additional parking and this parking, the, the new school can be opened, but this area here would then be a construction or more um, accurately a demolition zone to take down the existing building and then convert and ultimately build you know the playing fields that would replace it and end up with this site plan so that phasing strategy works for each of the variations of, of option two here um, with the building sited in this location the strategy is the same but the the thing that differs as you can see from from the site plan is that the configuration of the building is slightly different so in this one there's an enclosed corridor, uh, courtyard, partly because the previous version, there was some concern about having the open courtyard there, even though it's nice to have the view to the outside, there was some concern about one, students being allowed to use that and, and being able to wander off, or conversely, strangers wander in um, to that area. It might be a little difficult to, to supervise. Um, and, and the configuration is slightly different, but the commons is still in the center of the building, and this is clearly the academic portion, the public portion, and so forth. Um, and there's still a second floor, very similar to the to that previous one I just showed you. And here's the hybrid one, which is really the one that seems to um, uh, um, best meet all of the criteria that we've established and, and uh, the reason that we're, we're recommending it and the working group and building committee are, are now endorsing it too is as the, the preferred option. So it sits in the same position on the site here, a little different shape, but the classrooms are still facing south for good orientation. The one uh, significant difference from a site plan is that there's one entrance point, not two now, so it's a little bit more secure and better able to be monitored in that sense. There's still the majority of the parking in front here, but instead of this being the main entrance, this becomes the bus entrance, and this is the main entrance, which relates directly to the front door to, of the school. And I'll show you that in a minute, um, three-dimensionally. Um, and it, otherwise, it still flows the same way, where buses are segregated from cars in terms of drop-off. Um, there still be some visitor parking, a very close proximity here, good for public events at either a, um, a venue, the auditorium, or the gym. And likewise, there's some parking that wraps around the building that kind of supports the football field, too, a little more directly. And, and gives access to the service area. This is the loading dock back here in this case. So here's what that floor plan looks like. And the major change here is that the auditorium now, instead of being on the outside of the building, is moved inside here, surrounded by you know occupied space, including the band and chorus rooms. Um, the office area is still by the front door. The commons area is still in the center of the building. In this case, 
it's really the center of the building now, much more. Um, the, the two parts of the building, the academic part and the public part, are, are consolidated more in this plan. And also the other major move was lifting the, the library uh, learning commons to the second floor. And that freed up, oops, sorry, freed up space in the center here. Um, now we have a window, and so there's good view out of, of this space here, the, the commons area. And I'll show you that um, three-dimensionally again. And again, there is a second floor, very much like the other plans, um, where you get windows on all these spaces here. Um, still the same basic classroom clusters. But now, as we said, at the top of the main stair, there's the learning commons right in the center of the building. And that has a couple different possibilities for development. But one of the positive aspects, not only is it you know, in the center of the academic wing, but being on the top floor, too, we can raise the, the ceiling and have a more appropriate ceiling height there then it, it, when it's on the first floor, we have to sort of devote, um, uh, make it a double height space there. This allows the building to have a more compact footprint and still get the ceiling height in, in that learning commons. So here's an example, not of uh, necessarily of, of this, uh, you know, future Wakona, but it, it's a photograph of another school, obviously, but a very similar space where this is the student commons with a main stair, and it, it's the kind of stair that obviously you can walk up, but you can also sit on a portion of it. So it, it gives you that flexibility to have another kind of either informal gathering space, or it, you could even have lunch there, um, even though obviously there are dining tables. And there are views beyond, so there's glass below, there's the learning commons above. Um, it's a high space, it's a very welcoming space. It's also the lobby to the gym and the lobby to the cafeteria, so it, it, again, it's a very efficient, multi-purpose kind of space. And here's one other one. This one is, is to give you an example again of that kind of stair where, where students are sitting on it. It's also the main circulation route to the second floor. There's the learning commons in this school as well at the top of that stair. Uh, a lot of glass here to get natural light into the space. Um, it's organized very similarly in that it's sort of a T-shaped building of, of circulation pattern. So you come up to the stair, you can go right or left. There's classrooms on either end of the building so it's fairly compact. Uh, one difference here in this school, this was the entrance to the school, so you kind of came in and made a U-turn to go upstairs. In the proposed student comments for Wakona here, you come in the front door and, and flow right up the stairs, if that's where you're headed, or go right or left on the first floor. It's a, it's a very nice flow, we think, in, in that regard. So I, I want to show you what that looks like three-dimensionally. I have to change software. Just bear with me. Here, let me close that one. Open that one, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, uh, let's go right to a to a. Uh, right here. So there's the you know uh, building under construction, so to speak, and me adjacent to the existing high school here. Um, when it's finished, it looks like that. So it's located there. Again, you can see the bus route, the, the fields. You can see it, it, you know, it was positioned fairly close to the existing building. It will be kind of tight, but fortunately that's a blank wall of the gymnasium right now. We're not next to classroom windows or anything. So the school is well away from the, the classroom portions of the existing building. And if we, we can sort of manipulate this three-dimensionally. So this is the view. Um, currently as you approach the school and, and right now this is, is the main entrance to the school this would become the bus entrance but you still see the main entrance in the distance right on axis so the school is positioned well on the site from from that point of view um, if we look at as we drive down the road here so this would be the new entrance drive right right on axis with the front door and i could raise that up a little bit Oops, sorry uh, like there um, so as, as you drive in, you know, visitors would be on the right here, cars um, would be on the left to drop off, so there's a good separation of cars and buses, um, and the front door is, uh, you know, th this is not meant to be designed, we're still very conceptual, but you probably would want a vertical element there to kind of announce the entrance. It's still fairly modest in size, but appropriately kind of located right there. And as we just go to the interior plan so you can get a feel for that. So here's that, that plan again. And, and you can see if we rotate that a little bit, 
here, here's the front door over here. You flow in, here's sort of the lobby to go into the gym or into the auditorium right here. Uh, there's space for dining and then you flow up the main stairs if you're going to the second floor um, or if we go to the first floor plan and take that away um, this is that um, line of glass now so that the commons has a view to the outside and, and here's what that would look like as you enter the building so you can see that there so to the to the right here is the auditorium to the left is the gym um, straight ahead is the, the dining area and the stairs up to the second floor. Uh, as we move a little closer, you can get a feel for the space. So you, you might see it's not as wide as that photograph I showed you. That, that was a much bigger school, and, and we have to be careful here to make sure that we keep the, the, the space you know, appropriately sized so that we stay within the square footage allowance. But it still will be a very grand space um, and, a, and a real symbolic heart of the school the student commons, and it really does kind of embody the Wakona spirit. We think that, you know, a school like this deserves one space that kind of is identifiable as, as the heart of the school, and it serves both the academic area, the public areas, does um, multi-purpose, um, so it, it's efficient in, in that regard. If we were to sort of go up the steps here and look back down, so at the top of the steps, the learning commons is on our right. There, there's maybe some informal part of the learning commons with a balcony overlooking that. We have the opportunity for, for nice windows up here to bring light into this space. So it should be a very you know, welcoming, pleasant space to be in. Um, and it does you know, connect the main corridors of the building and the main access points. So um, you know, we feel that um, it, it does a lot of those, those things that, that we're looking for in, in uh, uh, let me open this up to to meet the educational plan. So let me just sort of summarize again what we've been saying about why when we use the same matrix form again these are the options that we are really evaluating were these three um, new construction options the region on site number two um, there was the A eight point one and eight point two. And, and these were the various criteria that, that we all developed. It came out of these meetings, community meetings, the working group, and, and the red, yellow, green is, is sort of like the traffic light where, where, where red is the worst and green is the best. And so you can see this one really meets all those criteria the best out of, out of these options. And, and when we looked at cost as well, we updated these with the help of our professional cost estimator and talking with Skanska in their experience. Um, the, these are all virtually the same cost, the new construction options. Um, it, it's sort of plus or minus 1%. But even these addition renovation, the, the one that's mostly new construction and saves only the gym and the auditorium, this is much like the Mount Greylock strategy that they ended up with. In, in our situation, unfortunately, this actually ended up more expensive than new construction. Um, Partly because of the configuration of the building, the, the layout, the, the extended um, construction period, um, some of those factors. And even the, the more um, uh, entirely renovation with some addition, the, the cost of that started approaching the cost of new construction. It, it's within 5 or 10% of the cost of new construction. And when you look at this as, as kind of a, a value proposition, when, when renovation starts getting that close to the cost of new construction, there are many factors <coughs> that weigh in the balance of, of new construction. Um, here are some of them that we think as to why this option, 2A.2, is, is the best to, and, and should be the preferred option. It, it best meets the educational vision. As we said, it really embodies not, not only the, the letter of that kind of, but the spirit of that um, uh, uh, plan. It, it, has the best long-term value, and, and even though it's a fraction, but it's the lowest cost of the new, new construction options. It's a very energy efficient, compact layout, uh, but still flexible. Um, it has you know, that, that good use of, this, of the site. That's why site number two was seen as the best version, um, best location for new construction. It, it segregates the built areas of the site, the paved areas of the building from the green areas of the site 
nicely to give you flexibility in, in both way in both areas. It has that single entrance as opposed to um, multiple entrances into the building, um, which we think is is uh, a safety and security uh, consideration. And it has a, a, a very straightforward construction sequence. It's short in duration, and so it has the least disruption to the ongoing teaching and learning uh, of any of the options. And, and just to be sort of sort of fully um, uh, explain the possibilities here, you know, people say, why not renovate? Why isn't the renovation? It's slightly less expensive. One of those options is. Well, the, the option that's the least expensive doesn't fully meet the educational vision. It's still the same layout of the building. We've tried to introduce classroom clusters as best we could in that, in that option. It, it didn't really um, uh, meet them nearly as well as, as new construction. It, it also doesn't fully need, meet the space needs. We'd still end up with some classrooms that are small. We'd still end up with a gym that's small um, and not the full you know, double court um, full size gym. It, it doesn't really have that long term value as we said, because um, even though we put in all new systems, we would have new windows, we would have new roof, we'd have a lot of new finishes, we'd have new heating system, new plumbing system in a fully renovated building. It, it would be like new in a lot of ways, but it's not, it's not equivalent to all new construction. We'd still have, for instance, the structure uh, is still 50, 60 years old, it's still the original structure. The underground utilities, plumbing, the electric lines, those are still original. Those wouldn't get replaced in a renovation. So not everything is, is new. So it's not quite apples and apples. And that's one reason that when the cost gets as close as it does from addition renovation to new construction, the, the balance really tilts to, to new construction. Um, and then, you know, as we mentioned, doing a, a renovation is a longer, it's at least three academic years with, you know, the need for temporary facilities and phasing and moving of classrooms, kind of leapfrogging around the existing building, because not all of it's going to get done during summers when students and teachers aren't here. And so that involves, you know, a fair amount of temporary measures and measures that are non-reimbursable in, in the project cost, like renting modular classrooms to free up some space for a contractor. That renting those classrooms is going to be required, but it's not reimbursable. So you're devoting more of the project, um, more percentage of the project cost, excuse me, project cost to um, things that don't have long-term value and, and are not reimbursable. And, and as, as many of you know, you know, doing a renovation, there's a greater likelihood we're going to run into unforeseen conditions um, which lead to change orders. And, and to protect against that, a greater percentage of the budget has to be devoted to contingency. So again, even though it, it, you can't quite compare apples and apples because you know, the contingency is taking away somewhat from money that could go to other things in the project um, to cover those unforeseen conditions. So when you, when you add all those up, that's why we believe that, um, that option 2A2 is, is the, and should be the preferred option that we submit to the MSBA. It's endorsed by the working group and, and by the building committee. So that's what we had tonight, Sean. Okay, thank you. Any questions? One, one quick question. When you talk about the, um, like the student common area, mm -hmm. the cafeteria, and then the learning common just up the stairs, is there, I think I saw, but I wasn't clear, is there a sound barrier? Wall of glass, doors? There, there could be. That's one of the areas that we would study more in the next phase of the project. Okay. We certainly have the flexibility to look at that a couple different ways. Okay. There are times I think you're going to want to close it off for acoustics. Yeah. Um, and, and so there are possibly, uh, possible ways to do that and still remain, uh, still retain the transparency yeah. with sliding glass walls or, yeah. or things like that. It, it could be more conventional doors in a glass wall, or, um, but it, there are options there so that we could separate it acoustically because that is an issue. The yeah. cafeterias, even, even with good treatment, tend to be louder sure. kinds of spaces. Yeah. Does the cost of a new school include the demolition of the old one and building the uh, ball fields? Yeah, that's a good question. We should um, recap for everyone that these costs, um, first of all, in, in those line items, you, you saw there were always two lines, um, and two numbers. The upper numbers are construction costs. Those are the hard costs uh, of construction, including demolition. 
but then the, the lower number there is the total project cost. And that's really like uh, considered, some people call it a turnkey cost. So it includes fees and contingencies and furniture and equipment. So it's an all-in cost, and it does include the demolition of the existing building. And that is a reimbursable cost to a great extent. Some of it, some of the hazardous material removal is ineligible for reimbursement. There's some subtleties there, but um, and, and doing the building the new fields is also eligible for reimbursement. But again, the MSBA puts a cap on site costs um, that um, most all projects of this nature exceed. But um, all those um, are in the project cost numbers here, all those um, aspects of the work. Yeah, I'm just a little concerned about the parking. I'd like to see us continue to work on that. Mm -hmm. Not, I don't concerns about the building, but trying to bring more parking um, spaces closer to the entrance to the building, I think, is is a big issue for us. And the way yeah. it's laid out right now, you'd be at people would be parking, having to park at the other end of the property just to uh, just to come in and, and do something in the auditorium. Well, uh, I think just for plan example. is is a little bit more compact than what we have today, certainly, where people are coming a long ways to get in the building. We've moved the building a little closer to the street and a little closer to the parking areas. Well, what happens now is people will park all over the grass and have that police come in and put up signs and everything else. So, you know, it's not just the, the area that you see as parking. Yeah, people yes, are using other areas yeah. out there as yeah. parking, and I guess that's what we're thinking about. Yeah. One of the things we would uh, typically look at is trying to, again, like a lot of things, get multiple use out of things, get double use out of the driveways so that for events you can parallel park along them so you can get more cars closer because you don't have to worry about buses, you know, during those times or, or drop off. Um, and, and so we can expand the number of parking spaces without expanding the amount of pavement, um, which is always a good thing. Carl? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First, I want to say, um, uh, kudos to you guys on the design and the, when you went from 2A to 2A1 and 2A2 really clever use of the space and bringing it down shrinking it down I think it was uh, a really nice job on the design piece really yeah. good the only concern I have with that with the with the design as it is right now when you look and, and you know you guys know this stuff way better than I do but my impression was when I was looking at the plan from above of the uh, dining area. Mm -hmm. It looks like the way you have the table set up in there on the one image, and it might just be the way you have it set up. It looks like a, at one portion, it's like you're going to be eating in a, in a hallway. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if maybe it's just the way you, you, you think, you know, if you lay out the space, or I don't yeah. know whether, you, you know, obviously you're, you're stuck with square footage, but it, it looks like you're dining in a hallway. Yeah, yeah. And it might not be, like I said, yeah. you guys know that better than this I do. That's my only concern. I'm just going to plan out there. And this is very conceptual. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are still ways. One of the subtle ways to, to work that is the, how you position the columns, the structure, because the structure can sort of imply enclosure. Um, and if they're not necessarily against the wall so that it's one big open space, but they're moved in a little bit, mm -hmm. then, then you define where the quarter is, and you define where the dining area is. We, we may be able to address that so it doesn't feel like you're eating in a hallway. Figure you're yeah. about that <laughs> okay. okay. How far away is the first wall of the new construction from the existing wall? What's the distance there? I've heard like, you know, on other projects have been like a foot away. Yeah, no, we're not going to be that close because we're going to be separated by the driveway. Um, let me go back and see if I can get to the right site plan here. Um, uh, right. Um, the orange line is the existing wall of the gym, or the locker rooms actually, right there. Um, and there's a driveway there that we want to maintain. Okay. So that's already about 25 feet away. And then we'll probably be another couple feet beyond that. So we're, you know, a safe distance away and it, it allows both access and fire vehicles to get in and out there. So we're not that close in that regard. Um, Oh, uh, recently there's been an article about uh, Greylock having a dispute with the town of Williamstown. Not really a dispute, but some pretty heavy fees for inspection. Is that included in this price? 
Um, fees. We're not at that level of detail yet. Where oh, okay. you know we could tell you we certainly made an allowance for for so-called you know um, general conditions and markups and things like that. Um, most school projects uh, there is some reduction in fees usually granted by the municipalities. With regional schools, it is a tricky situation because you know in, in essence one community is making a concession um, to the entire region that the other communities aren't it, it would be different if you were building a high school just for one town then clearly they and and fees are again non reimbursable from the MSBA so that's another reason that MSBA doesn't want to pay a project to pay a town so they just say fees are not going to be reimbursed so a lot of towns do waive them um, or waive them in some part that's a discussion you'll have to have amongst your district because as I said it, there is and maybe you've run into this uh, with other kinds of expenses that that Dalton maybe bears just because the building happens to be located here that the other communities don't but um, it, it can be addressed just to let you know that um, yeah fees are not reimbursable and generally uh, these kinds of projects there is some some waiver um, uh, to them uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, having spoken to uh, about you know having inspections and whatnot, uh, how much of an impact of a small town like Dalton who has a part-time inspector? How much in impact would that have on the, the, the amount of time that this will take? Uh, well, I can imagine it. The, the at certain times you've got to have people there. Kind of, kind of anticipates this for for projects of this kind of magnitude. They put a lot of onus on us as architects. We sign affidavits that the building meets code and that we're gonna make periodic and regular inspections. So we're out here all the time. And, and usually the local inspectors are, aren't overly burdened, um, at least the building inspectors still need to make some plumbing or, or look at the foundations. But it, it's usually not as big um, uh, you know, a burden on them as you might think because it, there's so much of a burden on us and our engineers and our that, consultants. That's what it's that, it's just getting them yeah. there. I mean, cause yeah. I think we share with a couple other towns you know, some yeah. of these inspectors. And yeah. Oh, John could probably answer that. Our building inspector is full time. Full time. Yeah. But I, I can respond to um, on other projects, even when there is a part time building inspector, we, we coordinate with them, like when inspections are required. And it is flexible too, so it doesn't mean he has to be there at like nine in the morning if he's there that day or the next day. Works out well. So. Mm -hmm. No, I was just commenting about the building inspector, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. I have another one. Um, I think there had been some talk earlier about access for, for the public, like when we're talking about gym space and auditorium space, mm -hmm. to the academic wing and being able to limit that. Mm -hmm. And I know you mentioned when you were talking about this 2A.2 that you approximated that a little bit more. Was no. it still a consideration to have a way to segregate it for it, safety reasons? It does. It does. Okay. So if there's an event in the gym or the auditorium and everyone's coming in the front door here, mm -hmm. you know, this space would be open, but right at this point yeah. and right at this point, you could have cross corridor doors that are locked okay. and, and you could mirror that on the second floor. Okay. Um, so even if people were to go up the stairs, they couldn't go either mm -hmm. direction. That, okay. So that's easily done that, that these areas can be segregated um, for after hour use. And, and you know all the areas that you want open, um, you know the, the set of men's and women's rooms right here that could serve either um, function uh, there, the locker rooms, you know, um, are all accessible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing too, by the way, with this kind of sharing, then the, the kitchen can act as the concession during halftime if you want to have refreshments. <laughs> you have a kitchen and dining area, you know, immediately adjacent to, to those areas. Um, Oh, what's the heating system? Is it going to be gas? Well, we haven't decided, you know, in specifics, most likely to be gas. There's gas to the site now in terms of a fuel source, but we, we still want to, just as we investigated alternatives for the layout of the building, we want to investigate alternatives for each of the systems as we, in the next phase. So at the end of the schematics, we'll have a decision. So in, by January, February, um, when we finish that phase, um, we'd have those kind of details nailed down. Sure. The elimination of the uh, greenhouse, will there be any allowances mechanically for a panel or something that 
you know, could yeah. eventually be tapped into to power such a unit when yeah, we finally we, build we it? We want to identify on the site plan, you know, where the greenhouse is going to go. You know, maybe it's here. There's, you know, this this is south on the, on the site, so there's a lot of opportunities here. Um, but we want to make sure we run some utilities out there so that there's power and water um, and maybe even network connections. You know, we can put those in underground and then the school district at some other time can can uh, build it. Yep. As you've seen this uh, baseball field pointing at the parked cars. Is there any way <laughs> turning uh, that around? I mean, it seems like that's the way things do are done. It's but, a pretty uh, good quote. Well, you know, you far. never know. We teach them how to park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is, I think, 320 feet there. So you got to hit about 420 to hit a car. Just there. so you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's 228 <laughs> down the right field line. Right yeah, right. It, it's, <laughs> it's bigger than your current field. Just in general. But in, in other situations like this, if it, if it does get to be nervous, um, we have a fence here already. You could turn that fence. You may have seen, sometimes they have these fishing net fences that you raise and, you know, they don't have to be permanent, but you can have them up there if you're really worried. We take it out of its first bonus check. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a better orientation though for baseball field than the current one in terms of compass orientation. That's why it's done this way. So, um, so the sun isn't in the batter's eyes, and or it minimizes. You know, Historically, this area is noted for that. I know Pittsfield <laughs> Suns is, is uh, historic. I guess they don't want to change it, but they have to take sun breaks because <laughs> the setting sun is too. It's facing west. The field is facing west. Um, will there be uh, the option to install air conditioning in the future if you ever want to do that? Uh, we'll have a discussion as to whether and how much of air conditioning should be in the in the initial building too uh, during the next phase um, and depending on you know how that goes we would talk about the the ability to do it in the future if the building isn't fully air conditioned probably doesn't need to be we're not you know um, we we see it going both ways nowadays uh, although the more buildings get used and you know especially for community use or summer school or it, it, it is sometimes a worthwhile thing to consider, you know, fully air conditioning a building. Um, we have done partial air conditioning where, you know, you might say one, one of those classroom clusters is air conditioned for summer school or something like that. So there's a variety of options there. It, it ties in operating costs too. You, you want to be efficient in operating the building. Air conditioning does cost more just to operate as well as to install. So we'll look at those things um, as we move forward. Well, I, I don't know if you said that there's there's two figures there. One's the all-in figure, turnkey figure. Yeah. But now we're going to be discussing gas or oil, uh, you know, air conditioning or not. What what is that going to do to those figures? Well, that's why one reason it's a range. Why okay, those numbers so are a range is because some of those variables aren't nailed down yet, but so they will be so those variables in the next phase. Those into some of those yes, correct. Yes. Then, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even the finishes in the building, um, you know, the quality of the finishes or the wall materials, there's a little, you know, range there in what's acceptable and still be a 50-year lifespan building. So that's why we, we present it um, as kind of an order of magnitude and a range. But by February, by the next submission, um, we'll have that nailed down. We have a motion um, for this approval of this preferred schematic report. The uh, school building committee did meet prior, and I think Carl referenced that, and they have unanimously endorsed endorsed this um, 2A.1. Mm -hmm. two, two. 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 Let's say the, oh, two. 2A.2, two, sorry. 2A.2. Um, yeah. So if a member would please make the motion. Whereas the Wakona School Building Committee approved the pre preferred schematic report on August 23rd, 2018, be it resolved that the Central Virtual Regional School Committee approves and authorizes the architect and owner's project manager to submit the preferred schematic report related materials to the M MSBA for its consideration. Second. Here we have a motion and a second to approve the preferred schematic report. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank that, you. That's what's coming up, by the way, in terms of the calendar. We'll be submitting this on September 2nd. It gets reviewed by a subcommittee and ultimately approved by the MSBA board on October 31st. That's their next board meeting. Thank you. Thank you all. This can't sit here, right? I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. See you soon. <laughs> Back to the agenda. Um, student Affairs, we have Ms. Brooks. I don't have so much to report on, but the fall season for sports is underway, so practices have begun, and I know our athletes are excited for the upcoming season. Um, Wakona has received the new Chromebooks, as everybody knows, and we're excited to be using those this year. And then finally, the ninth grade half day orientation will take place on Tuesday the 28th, and then first day school is coming in. Thank you. I can't wait. Awesome. I'm excited. <laughs> I can't wait. Good luck to the student body. Thank you. And secretary's report, would a member please make the motion to accept the regular meeting of July 26, 2018 minutes? Move to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of July 26, 2018 as printed. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I would a member please read the warrants. Move to approve warrant number PR 2019 3, dated August 9th, 2018, payroll, the amount of $434,674.96. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve warrant number PR 2019-3. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Two abstentions, the motion carries. Move to approve warrant number PR 2019-3D, dated August 9th, 2018, accounts payable in the amount of $76,758.13. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve warrant number PR 2019-3 Delta. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Aye. Two abstentions, motion carries. Move to approve warrant number AP 2019-3, dated August 10th, 2018. Accounts payable in the amount of $165,359.76. We have a motion and a second to approve warrant number AP 2019-3. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Two abstentions. The motion carries. Move to approve warrant number PR 2019-4. Dated August 23rd, 2018. Payroll in the amount of $428,694.24. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve warrant number PR 2018-4. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Abstentions. Two abstentions. The motion carries. <coughs> Move to approve warrant number PR 2019 dash 4D dated August 23rd, 2018. Accounts payable in the amount of $155,773.18. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve warrant number PR 2019-4 Delta. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Aye. Two abstentions, the motion carries. Move to approve warrant number PR AP, AP 2019 4, dated August 24th, 2018. Accounts payable in the amount of $911,681.74. We have a motion and a second to approve warrant number AP 2019 4. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? No abstentions, the motion carries. That's it. Okay, 
thank you. Uh, communications report of the chair. Just a couple things tonight. Um, as you know, we still have vacancies for the school committee, uh, town of Washington and town of Cunnington. The um, open meeting law complaint, you should have all received an email that the, um, the complainant did file an appeal with the um, attorney general's office, so we'll hear about that. Our, our attorney did review the, the video from that night and personally didn't see any problems. So, but it's unpredictable how the AG's office may may choose to interpret that. So we'll just wait to hear on that. We've heard nothing yet. Um, I don't recall if there's a number of days in the law that says they have to respond to us, but we've heard nothing. Um, the next thing is the November 8th school meeting, November 8th school committee meeting currently on the calendar. Uh, we've got a conflict with that date, um, mainly due to the MASC, MASS conference that's in Hyannis. Uh, most important part is the superintendent will be gone with a couple of school committee members. Um, being this a re-election year, the superintendent needs to um, to read the members, new members or returning members in. So we want to have the committee consider moving that to November 15th, a week later. If they would, Dr. Robert, please make the motion. Be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee approve the change to the following meeting date. November 8th, 2018 to November 15th, 2018. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to change the November school committee meeting. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. And just um, a note there about the school committee election coming up in November. And now we'll move on to subcommittee reports and recommendations. First up is curriculum. So we'll go on to finance. Peter Bonnie. We met um, we met this evening here at the school at six o'clock, uh, validated the agenda. There were no comments from the audience at the time. Uh, our minutes were approved from the July 26, 2018 meeting. Um, we had a discussion around the special education rate for uh, FY 2019. I can read that motion and then we can open up a further discussion. Okay. Uh, just to preface that, um, the special education rate for 2019 is about 2.5% increase. It's in line with our special education um, increase for the year. So, be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee set the base tuition rate for non student residents to attend Central Berkshire Regional School District for placement in special education program at $23,225 for the 2018-19 school year as recommended by the Finance Subcommittee. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for approval of the FY19 special education tuition rate. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. We also received an update um, on the mass budget um, from Melissa. What you've uh, seen in the paper has uh, still not been finalized, so those dollars that um, were spoken to in the Eagle that we were supposed to receive, we, don't, we still don't know what, what exactly those dollars look like yet from the state, um, so we can't speak to those and any impact that that might have on the budget at this time. Was that part of the packet, what we reviewed? Mm -hmm. Was it chapter 70 and 71? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're talking about the straight chapter 70 and 71 funding. Uh, I'm, I'm, what I'm wondering about is the, um, the, the rural funding that was Right, and that's what I just mentioned. That's that what you're about. It okay. has not been finalized. Right. Yet. Um, our chap we looked at the chapter um, 78, chapter 71 transportation, the school charter reimbursement, and the charter assessment. And some of those numbers are still going to be variable right now um, based on um, legislative moves in the budget. So right. we looked at those, they look favorable, um, as well as the school choice receiving compared to the school choice sending right now uh, that also looks favorable. 
the budget. As those get more firmed up, you'll see those numbers in our, in our initial budget presentation. If the committee's curious, um, Mr. Bueno sent out an email about the choice in, choice out. I had asked that question earlier, and I was just mainly interested for the committee um, to see where we were with the conic with the building and if that had any had any effect. But it seems like it's still, and it's still too early to tell. Well, no more next couple weeks. Okay. And lastly, at finance subcommittee. Uh, subcommittee tonight we discussed the um, or we took an initial look at the guidelines and instructions uh, and calendar for the 2020 budget and we began some discussion on the on the budget guidelines um, they're in your packet one um, one note is number five the instructions there they don't apply going forward this year so if you, when you're taking a look at taking a look at those please strike um, strike number five what is number five? Transportation contingency. Okay. We handle it differently this in the last few years. So the finance subcommittee is going to be meeting again on um, September 27th at Beckett, Washington, at 5:30. I would really encourage um, the rest of the school committee members and the rest of the finance subcommittee to um, really take a look at these guidelines and please forward any um, additional recommendations to me and Bonnie um, for our review and discussion at the next meeting. Uh, and then um, in October, we'll bring them forward the same as last year uh, for the school committee to vote on them. But essentially between now and the end of September is really your time to look at them and to, um, and to make any recommendations if you'd like to see anything added or anything changed in there. That's the end of my report. So just to clarify, in emails such as that, it's for recommendations for consideration on the agenda for the topics. And um, that all has to be brought out at the meeting, just for open meeting law concerns. All right, how about policy? Uh, so we met yesterday. And uh, every two years, the Bullying prevention policy has to be reviewed and updated accordingly. So we met and made uh, several updates to that policy. We need things like uh, removing Berkshire Trail schools and updating the titles of the people who are doing the programs that they've been um, doing such and stuff. And we have to um, put a reading on that first reading. So. Uh, be it resolved that the Central Berkshire Regional School Committee approves the first reading to the bullying prevention plan as recommended by the policy subcommittee. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for approval of the first reading to the bullying prevention plan. Is there any discussion? And just to note, there are two readings that the policy would be adopted upon an affirmative vote for the second reading. No discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Extensions. Motion carries. That is it. Okay. Thank you. Personnel. I have nothing to report. Okay. Technology. Well, we have not met. We have a meeting scheduled coming up for September 10th. Yeah. September 10th. Okay. Yeah. Just to know with technology, there were some emails and discussions at the last meeting. It was decided at the last meeting that. Um, Technology will be receiving a report in October before the school committee about um, how how our shared services are working, as well as what the um, basically the structural aspects of what or the planning aspects for what uh, technology has moving into the following year for the budget formulation. I think there was some misunderstandings about what that, the intent of that was. It was more it was less financially related than it was um, planning related. That's the plan moving forward. That's it. We've already been through the Lacona building project. So, superintendent's report and recommendations. Sure. So, um, I did have the opportunity to meet with almost everybody on the school committee, which was excellent. I really appreciate your time. I know you have a variety of competing um, 
um, demands on your time and attention. So that was excellent. I, I'm happy to meet with anyone I haven't yet. I do have one more meeting next week. Uh, Mr. Mr. Farley's back from vacation. So I will be meeting and I'll update accordingly. The information was really helpful, especially the conversation. Um, we spoke on a variety of topics. A couple things that stood out specific to my practice, um, really clearly identifying concerns and things that we are, are working on before getting into solutions. Um, I, I do struggle with being kind of a Debbie Downer or taking a negative tone, so I may even use language stems such as this is something we are concerned about. I am going to discuss ways we're addressing it, but I do want you to be aware we are concerned about it. Um, so just some really great feedback from people who are able to, to watch um, my presentation over the past, um, in some cases, three years, in some case less, um, but very helpful for the perspective. Um, also, this came out a couple times, which is really uh, a great observation. We spend a lot of time talking about what we're doing and what we're going to be doing, um, and sometimes for very good reason, we stop doing something. Maybe the interest is no longer there for the student. Um, maybe we have um, brought something to completion. Maybe we've added something better and, and something else doesn't make sense to continue it, but we don't do as great of a job of saying we're not doing this anymore. And then you might say, what happened with that? Why'd that go away? Um, so really making sure that not just through a line item in a budget, but that we're highlighting things that we may uh, move away from, even if it is for a good reason. So I'm going to try and be aware of that. Um, the other thing, if you do have the time to meet, your perspective on the MSBA project is, is extremely valuable because you represent every town and you represent almost every um, every constituency, every group. <coughs> Um, so, so for example, you know, Mr. Les asked a question tonight: Is the demolition involved? Um, the, demo, the cost of the demolition and, and the, the overall range? Um, I think that is a question shared by a lot of people in the community. So I'm going to ask. I'm going to add that to frequently asked questions. Um, yeah. Uh, Bonnie, you're still here. Um, had, <laughs> there's Bonnie. Uh, really good perspective on on people are, are, are really a lot of people are sold on the building or they trust the judgment of the educators, but they need to understand the implications for them as taxpayers and really making sure we highlight that we were conservative with certain decisions and making sure people understand where those decisions were made and how they don't impact the educational programming. So if you have time, it does serve both those purposes, and I was able to share that feedback um, with with uh, the school building committee, so I appreciated that. Um, it's been an incredibly busy week, but it's been a great week. Just to highlight a couple things for you, um, the administrative team and um, Trooper Kanata and Jeff Co, uh, Chief Co from the Dalton Police, spent about two hours together. Um, today's Thursday, Wednesday, uh, really closely looking at our safety planning. Um, our big goal last year was to get through reunification drills, make sure we clearly have reunification sites um, established and we have um, clear plans in place. This year, Trooper Canada wants us to move forward with what's called Stop the Bleed training, which is some basic training for, for trauma situations. Um, so we're going to be adding that to our plans, uh, but just really good to align our practices, make sure that we, we are being as um, proactive as we can when it comes to student safety. Um, we, we also had an, an awesome opportunity, and he is now um, famous among, among MASC, who has retweeted. Uh, Mr. Peters shared some of his expertise, being somebody who works far more often with visual representations of data than we do. So I hope you see us apply the skills we learned when we do our data presentation uh, later this fall, because it was excellent. Um, so we've been doing a lot of trainings together to get ready, um, but we're finishing up tomorrow and we'll be ready for the start of the year. I do want to um, bring to your attention opening day this year, I'm really excited for. If you if you can be there and you want to be there, um, we've actually, we are having our keynote presenter um, is a young lady, um, uh, she's known by Live Bits. we've talked about her before, she's been in the district before. Uh, she speaks about using the digital platform to project your voice um, on, a, on a global scale as a, as a student safely um, and in a way that you are empowering yourself and uh, connecting to the world around you. What's really nice about it is Liv is an entering sixth grader, so we invited sixth grade students to join us. So the sixth graders will be my, uh, my special guests at the keynote presentation. They'll be coming just for the keynote um, and leaving right after, but they'll have the opportunity ha to have a meet and greet with this young lady who speaks publicly all around the country at this point um, and to, to hear about, about her story and to see how they can use their own voice. Um, so if you can join us, you're more than welcome at the keynote in Nessicus at the auditorium um, at 9.30 on opening day. Um, after that, and I was waiting to get more information about what what uh, staff would select before I shared this with you. Uh, but after that, 
there are different sessions that staff can select to participate for opening day. So we have a morning session running in an afternoon and about six to seven different offerings. So if I were a teacher, if I were, um, if I were Laura Miller and I was teaching at Wakona, I got an email from myself earlier this week and there was basically a course offerings. Um, we're trying to UDL things for staff the way we work for kids. So Lara might say, uh, we've got this new Chromebook initiative. I see that there's a presenter here, a Google certified teacher from the collaborative offering an intro to Chromebooks. If her skill set's more advanced than that, there might be one on advanced Chromebooks. Um, there's something else on supporting students socially, emotionally in the classroom. There are some on, um, on things that are more specific, like Lara's a special ed teacher, uh, assisting students in facilitating their own IEP meetings. So basically, she could select two different sessions um, and be able to kind of have some choice herself as to what PD would be most helpful to start the year. Uh, so I'll send that to you. Also, in my opening uh, letter this year for the first time, um, I did include a little survey just about my own practice to date. Just a quick eight questions, how am I doing with things? My plan is to administer that survey again at the end of the year to try and compare the data. And I'll certainly um, share that with you as well. Hopefully I can use it to, to grow and to focus on areas that I can get better. So um, the feedback is pouring in. And once I get that data, I will um, certainly share it with you now. And then again, when I, when I assess it at the end of the, the school year. So that's pretty much um, everything. I will um, keep including things in the schools you might want to come um, and, and participate in. In my superintendent's reports this year, that was a part of the feedback in the, um, the interviews. Um, and then um, I did just the civil rights contacts. We just updated um, to reflect uh, one change. But that's pretty much it. Unless you have any questions about opening day or opening week or this week or busy. <laughs> this week's very, very busy for, for us, and then next week is, is, is even, you know, is the equivalent for the building. So this, the, the busyness to get ready, and next week it's the busyness when everyone's there and, and doing what, what needs to be done. Okay. Yeah, there's no questions for the superintendent. We'll move on the, uh, the agenda. The um, superintendent's noted some personnel changes, and I think she's also reflected that, and where she plans to have some reports coming up the end of September. Yes. I think is what you said. Yep. Um, to introduce some of the new staff. And uh, at this time, I'm not aware of any old business or new business. Um, if there's any particular agenda item you'd like to see for our first meeting in September, please let me know. And at this time, we'll accept remarks for the good of the committee. Anyone has any? Mr. Lass. Uh, a couple things. Uh, getting back to the new school. Um, it's pretty high cost, and uh, I stated um, last time we visited this, it was a little over 10 years ago. The cost back then was about 35 million roughly. Now it's double that. I'd like to see some numbers of what's going to cost the town. Uh, you know, at that 70 million dollar level, mm -hmm. so, you know, bonds, whatever. Uh, That'll definitely be provided. If you, if you're going to do that, the, the next time we talk about this, that will be great. And uh, uh, the second thing is. Can we arrange to have these chairs at every meeting? <laughs> <laughs> They're a lot better than the wood ones. Mine is this. I don't want that. <laughs> what? Yeah, that. <laughs> That's all. The uh, 35 million, was that uh, a new building? Yes, it was a new building. And, and uh, it was between 30 and 35 million. And um, uh, at the time, it was considered too much. At the, 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 you know, they didn't think the pounds would go for it. I think there was a preliminary, you know, like a, a feeler a committee that, w that lasted about a year, and it was a fairly negative, you know, response to, to replace Pocona because Pocona was, was a better building at the time, you know. So, but it's interesting how you know, ten or fifteen years of price can double. Absolutely. Anything else? Okay, accept motion to adjourn. So, uh, a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we stand adjourned. Have a good evening.